Oh boy. Hello and welcome to the Walk and Love podcast. I'm TJ. And I'm Brooke. And today we are going to talk about how fearless is not the goal. Thank you for listening to the Walk and Love podcast. Uh, thank you for making us part of your week. The Walk and Love podcast is a weekly conversation between Brooke and I about rhythms, parenting, emotions, faith. It's a place where we laugh and sometimes cry as we try to find language to live a more full life. Yes. And if you like your listening to line up with your living, then you are in the right place. <laughs> this is your place. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Jazz. I. Didn't, didn't, didn't. That is a <laughs> category of music. Category, that's not the right word. Category? Genre. Genre of music. Flavor. That I would like to think I would like. Yeah. Like, ooh, cool Brooke. She might like jazz. <laughs> and then I listen to, and I don't mean like, <laughs> I don't mean like Starbucks jazz. Like I can handle that. Like that's actually really great. I mean like jazz jazz yeah. where I'm like, I don't understand what's happening. Yeah. It sort of feels like a cat might be involved jumping around. <laughs> That kind of jazz, I just... This is not your vibe. It's not my... I'm not it's jazzed. Not, it's not I'm not jazzed by the jazz. Yeah. I'm also not a big hat wearer. Mm. And so it just feels like that. Is that part of it? I feel like that's part of it. Like a beret? Yeah. No, like a, you know, like a cool, like, brimmed hat. Oh, I have some know? brimmed hats, but I wouldn't say they're jazzy. No, not wide brimmed, like oh, short oh. brim, like more like fedora style. Oh, with some feathers on it? <laughs> One time, my friend Corey... <laughs> We were talking about someone and he's like, he's like, I mean, she's great. She's great. How would I describe her? Mm. She was probably the girl in high school that wore a fedora. <laughs> that wore a fedora. And I. <laughs> that is such a specific yet. I know exactly it, who she, it, who they're talking yeah, about. It is so. It's so it, real. It's, there was always one. It's so and real. I guarantee you she was in jazz band. <laughs> and I was just like, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. I already know. Like you don't. Say no more. Concert jazz band. There she is. Okay. First chair. Anyway. Um, all right. Let's talk about today's sponsor, which um, as always is us. It's just us highlighting all the different things we do um, so that y'all don't forget about them. So I want to paint a picture that you might. Paint for Ladies, me, let me paint a picture. Okay. So you trying to clean up your lifestyle, right? You've swapped out your candles for oils. Because who wants their pumpkin spice love affair to be tainted with toxins? Am I right? Wow. You've probably cut seed oils and maybe now you pay close attention to like all the organic foods you cook with. Um, you've got a sourdough starter going on and it's getting way more attention than your childhood gigapet ever did. Okay. <laughs> Mine was purple and it was a dog and I had to keep it when I was allowed to keep it in my desk at school, like before all the teachers realized it was a thing. I remember hiding it. Oh, I had a blue one too that was a monkey. Okay, I think I had two. Double gigapet. Double gigging gigapet. Thinking I'm going to be into jazz someday. Turns out I wasn't. <laughs> but I remember doing them and then I, we weren't allowed to bring them anymore. So I had to leave them at home and my sweet, sweet mother would take care of this monkey and this dog during the day. Because they would die. Because they would die if you didn't. It was, yeah. It's a wild ride. <laughs> anyway, that's a sub. sub gigapets taught us a lot of lessons. Gigapets. I, I've learned a lot from them. Anyway, but when was the last time that you were the star of your own clean journey? Are you still clinging to that face cleanser from high school? Ooh, still using the eyeshadow palette from college? Uh, I have been there. Four years ago, I was washing my face with the mostly just water. As it dripped down your arms? <sighs> no, because I couldn't do that. <laughs> so I would literally, this this pains me now to say out loud, but it's the truth. Quote unquote, washing my face meant I got in the shower, sometimes with a full face of makeup on or not, and just rubbed my face with water. And is that not washing your face? That is not washing your face, oh. which we need to talk about off the podcast. <laughs> if you are wearing a full face of makeup, TJ, and getting in the shower, we need to chat. Um, <laughs> but anyway, that was me four years ago. And then Beauty Counter came into my life, a name that... I had heard a bunch of my friends talking about and they had nothing but good things to say about it. And I was like, okay, I'm finally doing it. I'm going to stop using this garbage stuff that I know I needed to let go of a long time ago, but I didn't know where to start. I didn't know what to do. I didn't even know how to use skincare. Um, so anyway, since 2019, which is when um, I started using Beauty Counter, I, since then I have helped hundreds and hundreds of women just like you switch to safer 
cleaner, and truly more enjoyable skincare and or makeup. Um, and it's all because I didn't let that voice of doubt stop me from Hundreds seeking out. Hundreds of women and one husband. And one husband. Hey. Um, not makeup, but I wash no. my face. Or, I do I believe lotion. that. I know there's some clients out there. I have lotion. Who buy stuff for their husbands. I have a sea sermon. Sea sermon. No. Sea sermon. I have a sea sermon and lotion. Yes. Hey, you got a mist going on now too. <laughs> wow. I just am tricking you by putting it in a misty <laughs> bottle instead of a little shaky bottle. Anyway, um, if you have ever felt like embarrassed that you don't know, or just like uncertain, like I don't even know what a C serum is. I don't know what an essence is. I don't know what order they go in. Nobody taught me this. Um, I do not how to do makeup that actually makes me look better. Um, I just want to say I'm here to help with all of that. Let's silence those voices of like panic and I don't know what to do and shoot me a message and I will genuinely and not weirdly with zero pressure help you figure it out because it really has been a game changer for me yeah. to switch to better products. Um, it helps your hormones. It help, There's just like an endless, I could just go on and on and on. But here's what I want to do. So if you have never purchased, you've never made the switch to clean or specifically made the switch to shopping with me and getting a beauty counter product. I have a couple things I want to do to make it way more fun. So first of all, I didn't do this. The company did this. But right now, if you're brand new and you've never, ever bought, um, or if you just use a new email, you can get, um, <laughs> am I allowed to say that? I don't know. I don't Apparently. Know. Apparently. Um, Apparently. Well, then you wouldn't get your points. So it's not really worth it if you're already in the, if you're already doing it. Anyway, you can use the code clean for all 20 um, and get 20% off your first order, Huge. which is a big deal. That 20% really adds up. Secondly, I have opened a pop-up, which is basically Beauty Counter's way of just like you used to go to like a Tupperware party or like yeah. any sort of, you know, or a Young Living or whatever. Like you could go in person to somebody's house and you'd be a part of this party. Mm -hmm. We call ours pop-ups. I only ever host mine online. So all you do is you, you go through the checkout process like you normally would and your eyes got so big. I go online. I go click, click, yes. click. You go click, click, click. You add what you need to your cart because we've probably already talked about it. So you feel very confident. You add it to your cart. And then during the checkout process, it will ask you if you're shopping with a pop-up. I opened one. It's open for 10 days. And so you have 10 days to place your order and select this pop-up at checkout. I titled the pop-up, You Did It, because wow. they, they did it. They've made it this far. Wow, 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 wow. They made it to the checkout. They did it. Amazing. Select the You Did It pop-up, and that enters you to win free products from me because the party will earn products, but I do not need all these products. Right. Trust me, I have a ton under my counter waiting to be used. Yep. So I will give, all, give them all away. Amazing. Which is super fun. I also felt like, ooh, if it's only open for 10 days, um, I'm also going to do something else fun. So the first 10 double people, fun. double the fun, double the jazz fun. Um, the first 10 people to place an order, um, I'm going to refund your shipping. Whoa. Wow. So when you check out, you'll have to put in an email. I will email that email. So have it be a re real email that I can reach you to say, hey, you were one of the first 10. You know, can I Venmo you or whatever? Mm -hmm. Figure out, you know. Can I, I like write a check and send it in the mail right through <laughs> <laughs> media mail? It's going to take Again, a long time. Two to three weeks. Tops. Yeah, it, it's fine. Six weeks. You'll have that check. Yes, it'll be yours. So anyway, that's what's going on. So I will put the link in the show notes or you can message me on Instagram at easy, pretty clean. This was a long ad, but I mean it like it is. You are so worth switching and using cleaner things. And I know that so many of us as moms, we take the time and we make the effort to clean up so many things for our families. We make sure our kids are using clean stuff. And as a family, we're eating good things and all these other things. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we wash our face twice a day and use a perfume. And then we use a shampoo and we do all this lotion and all this stuff that is absorbed into us that is like not good. No bueno. And so let's make it bueno, right? Yeah. Muy bueno. Muy <laughs> Muy bueno. Double bueno. All right. So that's our ad. So review of the week. Um, <laughs> this made me giggle. The title is called Think Sleepover Giggles Meets Therapy Session. Oh, nice. Which I really liked. So five stars. The silliness, inside jokes, and segments, strong feelings is my favorite, draw you in, but the contemplative, challenging conversations will lay the groundwork for positive change in your life. Listening to the podcast feels like some combination of laughing or sometimes crying with friends, 
going to church and going to therapy. I've listened since day one and don't plan to stop anytime soon. Amazing. The only downside is how weird you'll feel when you bring a podcast inside joke out into the real world before realizing no one else knows what a butt clencher, <laughs> butt clencher is. Whoops. Thanks for all you do. TJ and Brooke. Oh, Heart. thank you. Amazing. Have, is sleepover giggles a thing for guys? Like as, as a kid? Um, I mean, like... I, I would I wouldn't call I would say, it. Giggles. I guess it's not giggles. Yeah, it's it would more be like, like crazy energy. Like yeah, like get, get yeah, it together. like it would be like jolt cola energy. <laughs> What's jolt cola? Oh man, that was like surge. It was like an era. Oh, I remember of like, surge. Yeah, it was like the co- Like surge was like the Mountain Dew version. Yes. Jolt was like the Coke version. Oh okay. Yeah. You get, you get a couple of jolt colas in you. Ready to roll, baby. <laughs> Are they like um? Uh, what's the is, it, is that like, it's like off brand? Like, was it cheaper or no? No, it was like an energy drink before <gasps> oh, energy drinks. That okay. was the whole thing. I'm sorry, I'm tracking like with Surge you. and Jolt were like even yeah. more sugar. Yeah. So they would hype you up good. Yikes. Um, but yeah, not like gi- giggles, you know, this <laughs> makes it sound so feminine. <laughs> so I'm not going to say that I giggled <laughs> at my sleepovers. <laughs> but there was definitely lots of laughter involved. But it, yeah. it's also like, you know, back in the day when I used to have sleepovers, it was like, let's just play video games all night long. Yeah. All on the same screen. Oh, gosh. You know, like. Yeah. I tried to play our Nintendo 64 here. And it like burned <laughs> the my old one. Eye. Yeah. It like burned it my eyes. It was so eyes. hard was like, to look at. When, well, and the screen was really big. I used to play this for hours. Yeah. It was much smaller no screen. I need glasses. Yeah, exactly. No wonder you have astigmatism. <laughs> anyway. um, how What's going on? How was our week? Well, our how week. How was your week? How's my week? Our week has been, you know, if you live on on Maui like we do, the week has been weird. Mm -hmm. You know, there has been a lot of sadness and pain and frustration. And then also sort of like weirdness, especially if you live on the South side like we do, of just like we were unaffected. Right. You know, like our life. Our day-to-day life was unaffected. It is basically the same. and like grief wise not unaffected yeah and but. so it's like this weird like when you see like if i saw people at church today see people at the gym you're like hey how's it going they're like good good i i guess you know right like I, yeah. I guess i'm good yeah you know and so yeah it's been it's been a week of more normalcy like i feel mm-hmm. like things you know it'll take a long time for things to get back to normal obviously oh, yeah but like f- as far as like you know i went to the gym a bunch of times yeah. We started homeschool. Those things have felt normal all while this like sort of, you know, cloud of grief and sadness have kind of hung over the community here. Yeah. Um, but then also to counterbalance that there has been like, there's like four stations over on the West side of like um, supplies for people who need them that are like completely 100% the community. Like yes. the government has not been involved very much. Right. And the community has just like kind of blown, like. I f- uh, somebody used a phrase. It wasn't crowdfunded. That's not the right phrase because funded isn't the right thing. But basically crowdsourced, maybe that's yeah, the word like, I'm looking for. It's like, just like, like Maui sort of saved itself. A hundred percent. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the people here jumped into action before anybody else had a chance to. Now yeah. with, with outside financial help, yes, people from everywhere were giving, but yeah. like, you know, it was really cool. Yeah, it's been incredible. And so, I mean, so like, yeah, the week has been good. S- you know, sad, grief, frustration, but then like also just normal life good. Yeah. And then, you know. And then like our fundraiser. And then we did our fundraiser, which... You know, I'd set the goal. Uh, we wanted to raise ten thousand dollars for Maui, and we're going to give most of it probably to Hope Chapel, our church, because mm-hmm. they have a fund specifically for this. And those are people that we have great relationships with, and we've trust and like all this stuff. Yeah. Um, and we had set the goal for ten thousand dollars. Twenty four hours later, we had raised twenty. Yeah. And so I was like, all right, well, let's just go for it then. Let's yeah. go for fifty. A yeah. little bit like, I don't know. I know. Like um, we might not make it, but that's okay. Yeah. The point was ten. And we did, yeah. and now we're above that. I haven't checked today, um, but here, here's a crazy story about that. So uh, maybe I'll save this for another podcast episode. Sure. Actually. Save it. Yeah, I'll save it. Okay. But yeah, the week was good um, in light of the scenario that, that's yeah. going on, but overall, yeah. like, you know, we started homeschool. Yeah. 
What about you? How do you feel like it was? Yeah, I no, I would, I would, um, I would ditto that. I feel like, um, as far as like some of the on Maui stuff, like the the needs are shifting so quickly. Yeah. From like we need food and water and to gas we and need ice. Yeah, gas, ice, all that kind of stuff to like, you know, like long term plans for people and rebuilding homes and like just all like it's just the the needs are changing so quickly. That's the mm-hmm. best way to say it. Yeah. Um. And what's so interesting is one of the needs already in all, in less than two weeks time. Right. We're yeah. around less than two weeks um, since it all happened. Like, you know, I. I try to be gracious and understanding. And yep. I understand that some people, I don't know. I really don't know specifically. Like I don't personally know them, but like some celebrities, some people on different islands who just like have big followings, like, you the know, news. some athletes, the news, whatever. For a while there, everyone was like, do not come to Maui, cancel your trips, get off our island. The, the language was Maui is closed. Maui is closed, basically. And I understand where they were coming from. Yeah. Um, especially people who, who grew up here or who live on a different island. It was this very like emotional, I'm angry and I'm grieving and give me my space. And so give me my space means give the whole island space. Yeah. And, and they put out some posts and some reels and all these things about that. And I think that they meant well, but, but what, what was lacking there on the flip side of that is only a small portion of Maui was completely devastated again completely devastating but there are still tens of thousands of people thousands and thousands of small businesses on the rest of the island functioning totally as normal and who desperately need tourism to survive yeah like it's just the truth it's just the truth of, of of any of the islands like the the economy with tourism is so intertwined yeah and it's why it was hurting so much during COVID. Yeah, I think when, during COVID, Maui had the highest unemployment they rate. They did. In Maui all did have the Maui highest. Maui County. Uh, in, uh, out of anywhere. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so it's like, it's, uh, so now it's like, there's this ripple effect. And so yeah. that's what I mean by the needs are changing so quickly because it's not just the needs of the uh, actual people totally affected. It's rippling out into like small businesses on the other side of the mm-hmm. island you know, like you drive near the airport right now and there are There's, fields full of rental cars yeah. because no one is here renting them. Yeah. So uh, like, it, so if you were planning on yeah, coming, please still come. Or you, like, obviously, unless you were, you know, if you're staying on in the West side, you're staying on the Lahaina, West side then absolutely. obviously your trip needs to change. Absolutely. But Maui definitely needs tourism. And yes. so, um, yeah. so I know, I mean, I, we get messages here yeah. and they're like, we're coming for this. We're yeah, coming for that. Or should we come? And we're yes. like, yes. And I'm like, absolutely. yes. And yeah. I'm like, now I'm like more than ever. Come yeah. like, um, the, the, the small businesses here, which are made up of the people who yeah, just, you know, it's normal people. We're just normal people yep. who, who need the, who need the business. So, and it's also just like, you know, like if the hotels aren't full, there will be layoff. Like it, it has a ripple effect. It is a big ripple effect. Um, and, and so, yeah. So if you were planning to come to Maui, still it, come, still come. Uh, we had not closed. We had one person that was, we had a couple that was going to stay with us. Um, because we, we do that sometimes mm-hmm. and I'm actually going to rework how we sort of do that. Cause the, like I did a Google form is it, a couple of months ago, it? Do you know? but it's like, I'm just going to let people kind of, I, I do know where it is, Oh, but I, I, I think I need to rework it to make it more efficient. Oh, so, but I'm going to figure it. that out at some efficiency. point and we'll put that back up for people to apply to come. Yeah. The first couple that was going to come like last, they were actually be here come, right now. Yeah. A couple of days ago. We said, Hey, Let's just push you back. But then the next couple that's going to come, we said, absolutely, you're going to come. Yeah, still come. So Enjoy the beaches. Go shop at the food trucks and all the places yeah. and support all the things. And, and so like for, for us, yeah. one thing that we've done is like we're like for the next 10 family dinners, we've decided we're going to buy food from local right, restaurants. Right, we're going to eat out, yeah, which we like, like never yeah, do. Yeah, just to like try to cultivate, support. you know, support the economy here. Yeah. Um, I know that for Moms on Maui, which the first one is full, but mm-hmm. we have... One spot now? I think so, yes. Yeah. One spot is opened in that yeah. one, and then we still have a few spots left in the second Yeah, so we'll link the both of those. The dates are all below, because I don't, I don't know I'm off the top of my head. Somewhere um, in October. But Moms on Maui is another great way that we'll like really kind of engage with the economy. Obviously, we'll buy groceries and kind of stuff like that, but yeah. we're, we're already trying to think of like how, how can, many small businesses <laughs> can, can I use and support? Incorporate into the experience that we're yeah. going to give. Yeah. Um, and as we talk about the topic today, I think we'll by default talk a little bit about Moms on Maui. 
Mm. Which again, you don't have to be an actual mom to come to. Correct. You do not. It was just a clever name. And then. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Yeah. That was my week. We started school, which started is great. School. I cannot believe we have a kindergartner. Sunny's in kindergarten. June is in third grade. What is life? Uh, we started on Monday. <laughs> and by Monday at like dinner, I had to text Bianca and say, I can't record tonight because my voice actually hurts, which praise the Lord, that yeah. so rarely happens anymore. But I was just like, I am so talked out from day one of kindergarten with Sunny and the amount of questions and the amount of <laughs> excitement that she had coupled with doing more extended school with June. Yeah. I was just like, I cannot talk any yeah. longer. But um, yeah, I just... I've said it many times. I'm excited for school this year. I feel like I have a better grasp on what it looks like for us mm -hmm. and our family and, you know, my strengths and their strengths and their interests and all yep. this stuff. So it's just really exciting. But it never fails that starting school or just being in school leads to some very weird Google searches. Yeah. So I would love to do what I Googled. Go do ahead. you have yours ready? I, I can. I, I don't think mine are ever as good. That's okay. But yours <laughs> normalize mine, maybe. <laughs> Before you say what you Google, I will say that this week we started two two big projects. Uh, one is very early on that we can't talk about. <gasps> the one that makes me so excited that I feel like I have hide and go seek pee. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so one is just like bonkers excited, but we can't talk about it. The other one is really good, at, really exciting, and we can talk about it. Oh, yeah. Um, we are going to launch tickets any day now. Probably not by the time you're listening to this. Um, for the Christmas extravaganza live. Yeah. So December 15th in Mannheim, Pennsylvania at the Junction Center. If you came to the best is yet to come, it's at the same, same event. Yep. Um, we are going to have lots of people there, uh, hopefully. <laughs> and <laughs> that is the plan. That's the plan. Uh, Pop-up shop. Uh, we'll record our last podcast of the year that day. Oof. Um, so get ready for some tears yeah. and some fun. And then also... We have Jesse Early uh, coming to sing songs. Yes. Which is absolutely incredible. That's going to be so So fun. she wrote The be Best Day With You, mm -hmm. uh, the song about Broken Eye. And then she's also a part of this. She's also just like a great musician by herself. Jesse Early, go look her up. She's on yeah. a playlist all over the place. Um, and then she's also um, a part of a band called Bien, mm -hmm. who has the best Christmas album ever written. Oof. So my, uh, that's that, my that, strong feeling. That's a, okay. There solid, it is. Solid, strong feelings. We listen to that year round. We've been. Yeah, I listened to it this morning. Well, it's interesting as we've been sort of mourning and grieving. I feel like the Christmas music has been very comforting to us. Yeah. We've listened to it a lot this past week. So yeah, Christmas extravaganza, December fifteenth, five thirty to eight thirty. Live music, live podcast, last podcast of the year, mm -hmm. giveaway, um, pop up shop. And then what we're doing, we'll have one sort of like premiere ticket av availability. Yep. Because the night before on December 14th, we are going to have an exclusive 30 person dinner at a uh, award winning restaurant in Lancaster Oof. City called Luca, so which is good. a pizza restaurant. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so we'll have all that stuff listed on the website. I don't think it will be up if you listen on Monday, but it should be right. up at some point during the week. Uh, and yeah, we're just super, super stoked on that. So what did you Google? Do, 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 ding. Okay. Um, I, I accidentally, I'm now remembering, I accidentally cleared my search history not that long ago. So I actually don't have as much as I thought I did, but let me hit you with what I do have. Um, check out Haven's Maui because I was ordering noodles nice. yeah. and, Smart. um, crazy tots and smash burgers. So much of my Google is actually your Google. Was I using you were on my iPad? Your iPad. Okay, and so maybe you so, have some of my... But so much of it would hint to people <gasps> okay, so the then, okay, secret so, thing okay, that so we're doing. I was Googling Havens. <laughs> and then this morning, apparently, I was trying to get into a Google Doc and my access was denied. <laughs> so I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is... Um, best computer displays that won't hurt my eyes. That was you. That was me. On my, on on my your, phone? On your iPad, probably. Yeah. We realized that I was on TJ's computer doing some work this week. Secret project. Secretproject.com. And I was like, my eyes are on fire and they're like burning. And I didn't think much of it. I thought, oh, I must just be on the screen for a long time. Right. It was so cool. Working so hard. <laughs> and then. Uh, you did look cool. Thanks. And then um, we sort of were putting together like, oh, I'm on my, my computer just as lot. much. And I don't ever say that on my screen. So anyway, 
Way to go, T. Yeah. You ordered yourself new screens today. Uh, Mistborn art. So <laughs> Why were you looking that up? Well, I'm listening to the Mistborn trilogy for the second time through. You just need some visuals. I was just like, I wonder what kind of art is because what a lot of people have been doing lately is, is using AI. Is using AI. They'll <gasps> type in the, like the first description of the character, and it's Genius. pretty. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So I was just like, you know, just Could geeking I... out on some Mistborn art. No big deal. <laughs> All <laughs> and, uh... right. All right. It's, it isn't a big deal. Um. Um. Mine is Ari the Bachelor? Question mark. Because <laughs> I didn't know who he was. I don't know. It's okay. <laughs> I assume they don't listen to this podcast, so Jeff, and that's fine. Jeff texted us yesterday and was like, hey, my friend Ari's on Ari's on island. Come play pickleball. Come we play need pickleball. more people. Come swim, blah, blah. Yeah. We were like, okay, cool. He's from The Bachelor. And I was like, well, never seen that. Yep. So I'm going to do a quick Google search so I'm not totally clueless yeah. in case, I don't know, he's a medal around his neck that says The Bachelor. Yeah. I need to talk about it. I need <laughs> to be- wear, He didn't wear a medal. He didn't wear the medal. I was ready, though. <laughs> I needed some time. I did points. find out that he's one of three people from The Bachelor that have gotten married and have stayed married. Wow. So, and a uh, pretty good pickleball player for like, it was like his only second time. But I think I heard Jeff say he plays tennis uh, that or has help. played that tennis. That would help. That would help. Anyway. All right. Descaling the Brevo espresso machine. Yes. De-scale, why is my breast? Sure. Why is my espresso machine make sure. sputtering? What is going on? Basically. Um, I, I don't remember searching any of this, but there's a lot of math problems searching in my, Oh, that was me realizing <laughs> the night before we started school. Oh man, I was on your iPad. <laughs> I was like, Oh man, we're going to start in the morning. I'm going to lay out their books. This is so exciting. Oh, third grade math. Let me, let me just see what we're going to do tomorrow. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, okay. Can do, can do flipping ahead. Let me look at the whole week. I'm going to be so prepared. Uh, day three. <laughs> what the, <laughs> I, not only do I not understand how the question is phrased, I don't know the answer. So then I flip ahead a few more pages and I'm like, doubles multiplication? We are not there yet. So ordered a different math curriculum at like 11 p.m. the night before school started. Paid the rush shipping again. Just kicking myself for that. Um, yeah, so that's why I was Googling math problems. Um, this is one of my favorites here because these are back-to-back -back Google searches. How tall is Phil Wickham? <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so Phil Wickham just came out with a great new worship album. Yes. Really good. Really, really good. And <laughs> I've been married to you for what? 14 years? Something like that. Yeah. It'll be 15. This year's fit. No. In yeah. In May. It's come. Okay. Yeah. And I believe in all of those 14 years, every time a Phil Wickham song is played. Not a song. If an image of him is that. No, it's a song. Oh, too. okay. I don't think that's true. But okay, go you ahead. You have told me. Hey, did you know Phil Wickham's really short? Somebody must have told it to me. And, and so, when they delivered it, it must have blown their mind. And so my I absorbed their <laughs> shock. And, and I now feel the need to It has to reverberated with you through it. time. Did you know he's really short? <laughs> so I had to look it up. Okay. Y'all, first of all, he's 5'7", which is not that short. <laughs> I'm 5'7". It's like... I don't know. I mean, it's, I wouldn't say it's tall for a guy, but... I definitely know guys shorter than 5'7". Yeah. So, sorry, Phil. <laughs> I think you're doing the best that you can with what the Lord gave you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah just doing amazing. great. Yeah. So then, we were watching, randomly, soccer highlights yeah, last night. Of Lionel Messi. Who, I still don't really know how to say his name. And you said, hey. hey you know, he's kind of short. Did you know he's kind of short? And I said, but is he shorter than Phil Wickham? <laughs> so, quick Google search told me, He's also 5'7". They're the same height. They're the exact same height. One is writing great worship songs. Yeah. And one is the best soccer player in the world. So yes. let this be an... I'm also 5'7". Let this be an encouragement to you, so I'm Shorties. I'm right in there. I'm in that <laughs> I'm in that sandwich, right? Yeah. When does your worship soccer album come out? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I'm not going <laughs> to... I have some album titles that I'm not going to repeat. Okay. Um that was pretty much that was pretty much it for me this week because you're right a lot of these would give it away um i searched a bunch of movie budgets because i like to see how well well i like to see how poorly movies more are doing. like how poorly movies are doing <laughs> so yeah. that's what i googled that's good da -da 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 -da. that's some good stuff um okay quick mount rushmore before we jump into our topic okay. um of place cities or places whatever you'd like to call it all right that you would travel to again who am I traveling with you or with? Like, I think the caveat is by yourself. By myself. You'd be willing to go by yourself. I'm not saying you have to go by yourself, okay. but you're like, okay, if I had to go to the city or wherever for a little bit, I would, I'd be, that'd be cool. 
All right, you want to go first? Maybe find you... a jazz bar. Uh, <laughs> sure. I would go to Nashville by myself. Okay. I think Nashville's yeehaw, yeehaw, woo girl, really. <laughs> so not like downtown Nashville, um, but I like the shopping. There's a lot of good food. Sections of it are really walkable. Uh -huh. So. Why are you smirking at me? I just think picturing you You're as a woo girl. Me as a woo girl. Like out the top of a limo. <laughs> yeah. Well, then, like on, pink, what's, what's the street called? I don't know. Pink Not cowboy Broadway. hat on. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, you're wooing it up. I am time. wooing it up. Who's with me in the limo? No, you're by yourself. <laughs> oh, that's right. I'm alone. Wow. Um, I would go there. Um, I would go to Austin again. I went there last yeehaw, year. Yeehaw, again. Yeehaw. Double yeehaw. And... Uh, because I was there for like a conference that we're going to talk about today. I, um, I definitely like didn't get to see mm -hmm. all the things. Um, I would go anywhere in like panhandle Florida. Oh, I'm not nice. going to be too specific, but I have been to a few places there. And then I have, because I've flown out of different airports, I've had to like drive an hour kind of like in either direction. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's got vibes. Okay. It's like, it kind of feels off the grid at times. And then at other times, I'm like, huh, is there an alligator on this road? <laughs> and then other times it was like, oh, there's Starbucks and all the normal things. And okay. it was just, I don't know. That's kind of where like 30A and like a yeah. bunch of those places, like Destin and Seaside and all that stuff. Um, and then you have one more? I don't know if I have a fourth yet. I'm sure that I do. I'm by myself. You're by yourself. Okay. I would go, I don't, maybe don't know the name, but like somewhere in California. Because I'm saying places you'd go to again. Again. I guess that's, I guess I could change it. Hershey to Park. Places Disneyland. you'd go to. Oh, I'd go to Disney alone. Done. I would go and to. And I've been there before, so that counts. I would go to Hershey Park. I would go to Disneyland. Seven but mile Only with pop. Fast Pass. Only with Fast Pass, yeah. yeah. I'm not going to wait in line by myself like a crazy person. <laughs> Peasants and their lack of Fast Pass. Um, I would go to. to seven Mile Pass. So you'd go back to Stone, Stone Harbor. Stone Harbor, Seven Mile And pop, just eat pizza. And just eat pizza. Mm. Um, so I'm, I'm going. I can't know anybody in the area. Like I can't. Well, you can know somebody. Cause like as I pick as... like places with family and friends. Yeah. So like you could go to Kansas city. Kansas see, I've never city. been to Kansas city, so I can't put that I'd, on my I'd list. Go to I've Kansas city. Uh, I would go to either Missouri or the Kansas side, even though Brad has some judge. strong feelings. My brother lives on the Missouri side, slumming it. Mm. Brad lives that's, in a mansion on the Kansas city side. <laughs> okay. So I have been to Kansas. Nice. Several times, but I don't think I've, ever been to missouri that i I'm gotta go to of. kansas city i'd go to austin it's a good time maybe i'd see you there yeah <laughs> we should coordinate we should go together mm, i don't know <laughs> well i'm united premium silver so and the tsa pre so you yeah. probably wouldn't yeah it'd probably just probably, be too, probably inconvenient, wouldn't work out. too inconvenient for me to travel with you <laughs> um but yeah i think those are those are my places kansas city san diego my sister lives in san diego yeah i like austin yeah um I also, we, I'm going to Integrated next week in yeah. Colorado. Colorado's got vibes. Colorado does have I'm vibes. I'm into it. I've been there only once. I would love and to so say I don't like know if I would go back Southern by California. Like, obviously I said San Diego, but like I'd love to be like, you know, like LA or whatever. But like, it's no. so sketchy now. That yeah. I'm no, that's why I said Disneyland. That sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. So those are my Mount Rushmore, Rushmore, Rushmore. <laughs> places I'd go by myself. Go 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 <laughs> I've been attacked. Now I'm kidnapped. Whoa. <laughs> it got dark real quick. Got dark real quick. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um, la two weeks, I was going to say last week, time is weird. Two weeks ago, it doesn't really matter. Not that long ago, I traveled by myself to Charlotte, North Carolina, which I had never been to before. I've been to the airport many times. Mm -hmm. I've been to North Carolina many times. I've never stepped outside the airport in Charlotte, in Charlotte North Carolina. So I, um, I went for a beauty counter like conference, like they actually put on like a big event every year. Um, and you can go and you can, they bring in all these amazing speakers and they launch new products and they just, it's just a great time to like all get together. Um, cause you make a lot of friends and you don't always get to see them cause everybody's like spread out, yeah. you know, throughout the whole country. And so it was really cool. I loved that it was on the East Coast. Um, they typically don't do that. And I felt like that worked out really well for a lot of my people. Because mm -hmm. a lot of my people are more on the East Coast. And right. so it was really fun to see everybody. But um, as I walked back into the Kahului Airport, I was a little triggered. I was a little like, I'm not going to get on this plane. I'm never going to leave this oh, airport. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because over the last time, I blocked I it out of my I had to memory. leave 
from gate 35. And I was like, it's not happening. Yes. <laughs> They're going to make me walk back and forth. I'm never going to get out of here. I did though. I tried to buy some pearls on the way in. Pearls. Well, the jewelry section was open, but there were no pearls ah. in the tank. And I was like ready to take a video and buy because they're like 19 bucks. Yeah. I was going to buy one for the podcast audience and give it away, but I couldn't do it. So sorry, everybody. But you made it out. But I made it out. And then I'm like, it's a red eye, right? Because that's how it works. Basically, usually when you're going from here and you're going back to the East Coast. So I was leaving here. I don't remember the day of the week on like a Wednesday night. And I was landing because I had a kind of a long, annoying layover. I wasn't even getting into Charlotte until like two in the afternoon, right. Charlotte 10. And so I was like, I'm going to get so much work done. I'm alone. I got an iPad. Yeah. Look at me. I'm going to type out all this stuff. I'm going to be <laughs> so organized. I slept so hard and uncomfortably, but so hard. <laughs> I mean, it was overnight. So I guess that makes yeah. sense. I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah. I think I was just excited. Yep. Slept the whole time. I well, while we're talking about you sleeping. Yeah. This has never happened in our marriage. What? But the other night. Oh. Brooke <laughs> woke me up by snoring. I was snoring. Yes. You were snoring. Yes. And I and it was one of those things where I was like, what's happening? What's that sound? Yeah, what's that sound? Are like you doing yard work? I just I, I couldn't <laughs> believe it. And I looked over and sure enough, mouth open, just sawn logs. Yeah. To the point where I had to push you to make you stop. Yeah. And you didn't wake up. <laughs> Now, Brooke will hear the baby gate click from downstairs and be like, kids wake. Oh, I hear neighbors start cars. I, I hear it all, which yeah. is why I sleep with a pretty loud fan running but so like, that I don't I hear everything. I actually pushed you to yeah. make, and so maybe it's wow. just like, maybe you've entered your uh, deep sleep era. That would be wonderful. That would be wonderful. I'm here for that. Yeah. I like that for me. I love that for you. I really love I've that I've loved for it for me. Yeah, you've been in that era a long time. You were born into that era. Well, it's all the Joel Cole I drank when I was well, a kid. Yeah. I get it. This delayed side effects. Um, yeah, so, you know, I basically slept on all four flights. Two there and the two back. And the two back were during the day, which is so funny. But obviously that is what um, my body and insides were needing. But the conference itself was so fun. It's Beauty Counter's 10-year anniversary, birthday, whatever you want to call it. And so they went all out. It was just, everything was extra, yeah. which made it way more fun. And I'm like, well, the bar is set very high now. Yeah. So please give me this many things next year yeah. when I come. Um, but yeah, so they brought in some really great speakers, which I, you know, I don't know. I'm like, I don't, I don't know how to say it. I'm not really on the internet other than Googling things. Yeah. I don't, I, like I if think something this goes... is a true statement. I don't think I follow a single celebrity. I don't think, like, I'm just not. I in would describe know. it as if something goes viral, the mm. only way Brooke is finding out about it is because I've told her, hey, you should look at this. It went viral. Yes. Or, hey, people are doing this thing because it's gone and viral. Like, Apparently, he's a good soccer player. Yeah. What's his name again? Yeah. Yeah. Like the song that's gone viral, uh, the, the country music song. Oliver something, Oliver right? or Anthony. Anthony. Brooke would have never known that song oh, existed. No. It's number one song on iTunes. Wow. Good for him. Yeah. Um. But I saw it was going viral, and yeah. so I showed it to you. So right. you you are in the know, but, but only, only because of you, only through me. Yeah. And and it's I, very rare. And again, that I I'm you. not like a no. You're like not. I don't have a Twitter or whatever it's called now. It's called X Twitter. now. Oh, okay. Yeah, you changed the name. Did you know that? I did not know that. Yeah, Twitter is not the name anymore. It's you're called, dead serious. I'm right dead now? serious. It's called X. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. We need to pause here. <laughs> Twitter is no longer called Twitter. Right. It's called X. Why? Because because like it has a because Elon Musk bought it. He, he renamed it. Yeah, to X. So I'm going to X.com, just uh, the letter I X. I don't know where the URL How is. How do I log in? I don't know my password anymore. That's why I haven't <laughs> I haven't tweeted anything in a decade because it was like, oh, we sent an email to whatever. I'm like, well, that email's dead, so I can't get in there either. Anyway. <laughs> um apparently Jay Shetty is a big deal. Okay. He came to speak. I did not I know who he is now. I did not know who he was then. And they played like the... I don't know who he is either. What's that like? Um, oh, so I deleted Instagram from my phone. I can't yeah, no, up. it's fine. Like the... It has a name in the industry, like a something real. Like a... Ah, that's going to drive me nuts. Like a promo reel. Kind of. Like before he came out, yeah. like this thing played. Hype reel. Kind of, sort of. And it was like... Hype it gave promo you context reel. of like, oh, promo reel. this guy does things. Creed thoughts. So that was cool. 
didn't know who he was, yeah. but everybody went nuts. And I was like, sweet. What does he do? He's a podcast. Okay. He used to be a monk. Okay, cool. You're like, I have two podcasts. I have two podcasts. So (laughs) So, deal with that, Jay. (laughs) Um, Yeah, but the just everything was great. There was um, lots of really cool just like talks and training about specifically beauty counter stuff, which I was just like loving, you know, talking about how we've been we've been in the industry of cleaning things up in the personal care products for a decade and how um, the whole like, hey, let's pay attention to this stuff and like be cleaner and be safer started a long time ago with kids toys. That's kind of how it all started. Like yep. there was lead in Thomas the Train. There was um, a bunch of stuff in rubber duckies. Like all this stuff was like, oh, whoa, yeah. this is not good. And that sort of got the ball rolling. And then it went like the steam kept going right like yeah. into the cleaning products and people started cleaning all that up. And then it hit like the beauty and personal care industry literally when beauty counter started, like yeah. they are the creators of clean in that space, which is and so now cool. It's headed to food. And now it's, he- it's like going through food and now it's headed into supplements and like just yeah. all of it. Like, it's just really cool to see like, Hey, you can work at something for a long time mm-hmm. and make a difference. Yeah. Like it's not always immediate, but you can, you can change things and you can better things. So that was, um, that was really cool. And then there was a lot of talk or, uh, you know, it's interesting. You go to anything, you could go to like, you know, a bunch of church services in a row or any sort of conference or listen to like an, a, a, an assortment of podcasts and right. you will take away like a, Oh, I, I feel this common thread. Like I, everybody seems to be kind of talking about this. And so whether it was like somebody from headquarters talking or somebody they had brought in like a Jay Shetty, apparently, um, Everybody kind of touched on at some point this concept of don't apologize for X. And I want to park there for two reasons. One, that's a real tricky statement 100%. used in some ways. Yeah. This idea of don't ever say sorry. Like that's very dangerous. That is not at all what I'm saying as, right. a, as we continue to talk about this. Like I am all about like um, owning your stuff saying sorry, healing, forgiveness, forgiveness, like, like, grace, like a a thousand percent. So that's not what I'm talking about that I'm all for. What I am talking about is this like living from a posture of what I care about doesn't really matter. Mm. I'm going to minimize something that's really important to me, but I don't know if it's important to everybody else. So I'm just going to like squash it and maybe holds a weirdness or shame about it. And so I sort of live from this posture of like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I like this, or I'm sorry I care. I'm sorry this matters to me. Like that sort of like, don't apologize for that. And so um, I, that was one of my like, oh, I kind of connected some dots there. It's like, people are really talking about this. And and it, it, it hit home for me, you know, on a couple different areas, but like, you know, I, I was, I took very few notes, but some of the notes I did take, I was like writing out real quickly, like, don't apologize again in the way that I'm using it. Don't, don't minimize. Don't be speaking to myself like Brooke, don't minimize. Don't be ashamed of, don't make it smaller than it is. Don't downplay it. Don't act like it's not exciting when you actually think it's the most exciting thing ever. Like, that I, that one of my jobs and I have many jobs, but one of my jobs is that I get to help people find safer products for them and their family. Mm. Like that's, that's not something to be like, Oh, it doesn't matter. Like it matters to me. And then I started writing like, what else do I have I in the past? Or do I still live in this posture of like kind of apologizing for or saying sorry. And, um, some of it, like in, in normal, you know, as believers, we need to say sorry yes. when we sin. Absolutely. And so I think what you're talking about is saying sorry when you don't sin. Right. Like it's yeah. this element of like we yeah. live. And, and I don't even mean that it's always a verbal sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm not actually saying to someone, I'm sorry I eat organic and you don't. Like I, I'm not right. Like I'm not saying <laughs> it out weird, loud. It'd be a weird Some, conversation. It's a weird start. conversation. <laughs> Some people do say those things on the internet. And it's really rude. Yeah. But like, uh, you know living in this way of like somebody minimizing is a really minimizing is a really good thing or feeling like ashamed that like it matters to you and your family and it might not matter to your neighbor or to your sister or to your parents like yeah this like oh i'm just gonna downplay and sort of mumbly apologize for again not always actually verbally um i'm guessing people know where you are hopefully (laughs) um and so like (laughs) (laughs) that's i love 
that's my fake nervous laugh and I'm into it because I feel it internally a lot. Um, but like, you know, I was writing to myself, like, don't apologize. Dear Brooke, Dear how, Brooke are, how are you? How are you? Good. I'm well. I'm at a conference. You're going to need a new diary soon. You're almost out of pages. Uh, make I'm sure sorry. you order one in time. Don't forget. Um, no, like don't, just talking to myself, like don't apologize for having a vision for our family. Mm -hmm. Like don't apologize for loving Jesus with my whole heart mm. when others around me or in my life don't mm. like, don't downplay that. Don't minimize that. Yeah. Don't, don't not talk about it. Um, because of, and sometimes it's like we, we minimize it because we don't want to ever feel any discomfort. Right. And so we minimize our own emotions and feelings yeah. about something that we're very passionate about Yes. because we don't want someone to else to feel uncomfortable, even though that's never the heart behind what no. we're doing. No. But we've sort of made that the like heart of it. Yeah. But it's not. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, I, so I wrote down a bunch of things like, Brooke, don't apologize for it, blah, 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 blah. And then I asked myself, like, sorry, excuse me, like, what is there? Some, is there like a, a common thread or is there like a tie, like between all the things I wrote down? And I, I think probably about anything I could write down ever answering that question or write or finishing that statement would be like, I often feel the need to apologize or downplay, uh, apologize for or downplay something because I'm, there's all, there's a lot of fear attached to it. Like I downplay that I'm interested in this because I'm fearful that you will judge me or I'm fearful that they will think something of me that's mm -hmm. not true or like it's very much tied into fear and not just like, oh, I'm shy and it's not like a, oh, I'm right. sorry, like constantly literally yeah. apologizing, like nervous behavior. It's more just like, oh no, I'm fearful of things and so I'm going to avoid those things at all costs by never talking about anything that excites me. And I was like, Ooh, don't want to live there. And yeah. so, um, I had also written down, somebody said it on stage. I don't know who it was. <laughs> I can't give credit. I don't know, okay. but they said, and it's hopefully the title of this episode or something about this episode, which was, I wrote down fearless. Isn't the goal brave is. Mm. And I was like, yes, yeah. writing that down in my very few notes, <laughs> right underneath all the things I need to stop living from a posture of apology yeah. of minimizing um for and so i forget maybe you remember i forget what year it was that brave was my word of the year this is the year we had sunny so she was born in 2018 yeah so it was like it was it eight, was that year it was that we year was, we almost made it her middle name we did that's right and so i wish then you know it's always easy to go back and wish yeah. but but i wish then that i had had the that like two part attached language to go along with brave because brave sounds amazing. And that is a great word. And I believe that I was that year. I was probably as brave as that version of Brooke could be. Right. But as I, you know, take that with me through life, I like, there's so much talk in culture on Pinterest quotes, like anywhere, you know, culture and Pinterest quotes. Yeah. Yes. Those two, two things. pillars of pillars of society, of society um, <laughs> about like, conquering our fears or, or being fearless or like not today fear. And like, yeah. I get it. We used to have, we had a shirt, remember yeah. it was embroidered that says not today fear. Yeah. I'm all about that phrase. And I'm like, that sounds great. What does that look like? Yeah. Like, I know what you're saying, not today fear. I'm not going to live in this, you know, this like apology posture. I'm not going to minimize my life and all that. But like, what does it look like? And I think the follow up if I had to kind of make one up to the phrase, like the second half of the phrase, not today fear would be like, not today fear, choose brave. Mm. Like it's one thing to say not today and you won't dominate my day and you're not going to rule my decisions and I'm right. not going to live there. But then what does it look like? And I, I believe that it looks like choosing brave. Like you can really only be brave even when the fear is still there. Yeah. Because if the fear is not there, that's just like, this is like normal life decision. Like 100%. You, you don't need to be brave yeah. because you can just do that. Like no problem. Mm -hmm. And so like bravery is not the absence of fear, but action in the face of it. Mm -hmm. And so, so much of my personal, like 
oh, I'm not going to make a big deal about that. Or if somebody says, what's new with you? And I have like three things I'm real excited about. And I'm like, oh, not much. And I like don't share mm. and I don't talk about it because I don't want to make them feel something. Or again, it's fear. I'm fearful that X, Y, Z, if I share or if I talk or if I whatever, like I just, I, I, it was like this connection of like, don't apologize for, insert your thing, right. or don't live in that posture coupled with like, Fearless is not the goal, brave is. And yeah. so what if I could name the things that I live in that like apology posture, Minimizing that, posture I, yeah. that I minimize? Yep. What if I could name those, quite literally write them down? Yeah. And then what would it look like, what, look like if I chose brave in those areas? Because I don't think my fear surrounding those things is going to just go away. Like right. uh, that's, I don't think that that's totally possible. I don't even know, know if it's totally necessary, but like, what would it look like for me to choose brave and to remember that in situations like that? Cause I so often when I hear like brave, I'm like, yes, I'm going to have another baby. It's like these big right. things that really walk by the food court, skip, look down over the food court, down to the second floor and like uh. not black out over the heights. Like, but if somebody was like, what are 10 ways you could be brave or, you know, I don't know something I would probably rattle off like, Oh gosh. Okay. I They're like jump off big, a waterfall. Like, yeah. Yeah. They'd be like big, scary things connected to like very real big fears. I don't think I would scale it all the way down to like my everyday and, life. And it, it would almost be like physically tangible fears. Yes. Like, yes. That's probably I'm what would jump come. in a cage and let sharks swim around yes, me or that's like, you probably know, what yeah. would, what would it look like for you to be brave? Like, because that's I, what we, there's a lot of us who as parents, that's what bravery is associated with to our kids. Like yes. I need to jump in the pool. Well, that's going to take some bravery. Mm -hmm. And and so we're, we're encouraging them to do that very physically. But a lot in, of physical bravery. But in yes. our lives, the, the bravery isn't it's very rarely physical. physical. Outside yeah. of maybe having a baby. Yeah. But it's, it's much more like theoretical it is. philosophy it's like based mindsets. like it's like all these things and i'm like casting is still so much fear yeah. tangled up in that yeah but it's not as easy to point out and like to notice yeah and so you don't you might not realize oh my goodness what is holding me back what is holding us back from our family living out this vision we have or whatever like it's totally fear mm -hmm. it, like you know which some people might be like well yeah i already knew that but it, we don't, I don't know. I just don't think we always name it exactly where it is. And then right. we think, okay, well, when I overcome that fear, when I no longer feel that fear, right. I will step into this thing. Yeah. And it's like, and, and, you know, we, we've talked about this, like uh, a big fear of mine is running out of money. Mm, like right. literally like having you, to you, live under a bridge. I mean, there's like, I'm sure there's like five common fears yes. all people have. And yeah. that's not one like, I think about a lot. Mine are like other we're things. We're going to end up living under a bridge. Like right. that's where the joke on the podcast of Googling bridges has come from. Yeah. And if I just waited for that fear not to exist before I started to save money, learn about money, yeah. spend money more wisely, learn how to make more money, all yeah. this kind of thing. Mm hmm I would never do it. Yeah. And you have to live with that, maybe that fear. Yeah. And some of that fear is, is discomfort and yeah. it drives you to action, which actually yeah. pushes you towards yeah. maybe choosing brave. Yeah. And I don't know if, I mean, you can speak to this. I don't know if you feel this as a guy, but I feel like culturally, very rarely when I am on the internet and like, you know, reading things. Not or trying to figure out things. how to do math third grade math, um, I have big fear of mine. I, um, I often feel like some of what is pushed on women is like, just do it and do it all. And like, be fearless, like be so unapologetic yeah. in the other in way, the obnoxious in way, the obnoxious yeah. way that like, you're just living your life with no fears. And if anybody gets in your, it's this like very like corporate, you know, I mean, it's why the, every modern movie, gook with a female protagonist stinks now because yeah. they're they're literally the embodiment of that. They have no yes. nothing to overcome. Right. They have no fears. They have Everything's no fears. Amazing. They're perfect they're in everything. Strong. You're just they like, this isn't a story. That's I can't relate to that. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm over here Googling third grade math. I can't relate to you right now. Yeah. You know, person. But um 
Yeah, I just, I, I feel like that's like this, that's the subconscious thing, like it, that's kind of being said instead of, you know, just like, no, you can still have all your fears and have a, live a really brave life. Mm. And obviously that was my word in 2018 and it's yeah. coming back around in 2023 is like something that I, I think I will always need to hear and mm -hmm. always need to remind myself of that. Like, I don't need to eliminate all fears or all discomfort or all whatever it looks like. I could name a bunch of different things mm -hmm. so that then I can choose brave and do this thing I'm excited about or tell somebody about this thing I love or like that I can still feel all that inside. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's something inside of us that wants everything to be a little easier. And we've talked about this before. Yeah. And so there's this element that I think unrealistically and if we're honest with ourselves we know it's unrealistic to oh, think a thousand percent if just blank and blank happens then life could start or i could take the next yes. step or i could do the next yes. thing and then if we if we actively have like an honest conversation with ourselves about that it's like well no that, that'll never happen that's not life i wouldn't tell my kids that yeah i right. wouldn't say you know once you learn how to read your life is then just easier forever and nothing will ever go wrong right like i'd be lying to my kids right um, and, and so, yeah, it's just this weird thing that we do that in our heads yeah. and in reality, like we need to be comfortable with fear, knowing that God conquers fear, yeah. that he tells us not to fear yeah. because he is enough. We are with him. Yeah. He is with us. Um, but that's hard to learn. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a constant battle to fear to rest in his love and rest in his perfect peace mm -hmm. because we want to make it so much about like, well, let me just, let me just hold all this stuff that I need to get rid of. Yeah. Um, and yeah. it's like, well, if we, if we could get rid of all fear, would we really need God? Right. I don't know. Yeah. 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 So it was like, you know, I had a few takeaways and I'm going to, a, a, a separate takeaway from the conference is actually for a separate episode, but it was like, I connected those two of like, okay, so if the goal is not fearless, but to be brave, like, what am I, what am I not being brave about because I am fearful? And it was, for me, it was like, oh, it's minimizing things. That is a way that fear shows up in my life. Mm. To like live in that apology posture. My thing doesn't matter. I don't need to talk about it. I don't want people to think that I'm like yeah. whatever. And like, that's really just kind of fear running the show. Again, not saying to be over there on that side and say that I'm always amazing and, yeah. you know, like not live a graceful life. Mm -hmm. Like that's not the point. But so when I was on my final flight home, like the fourth one, and I wasn't asleep when I wasn't totally passed out asleep on the tray table in front of me on top of a very hard and uncomfortable backpack, I made a list of things I want to remember from lead 2023 Okay, because I didn't take very many notes. And so I was like, I need to just write down some things so that I don't forget it all. Yeah. Cause I really just want to know my takeaways. And so I wrote down a couple things. I wrote down the discomfort I felt last year because I went last year in Austin was almost non-existent this year. I took what I felt last year and I let it change me. Mm. And I, um, last year was great. It's the first time I'd ever gone. I had never really gone to anything quite like that. I had never gone to anything from beauty counter corporate. Um, you know, it was just, it was the first time I'd ever really truly totally traveled by myself right um because of how the flights work and all the things going to an island and back like i had to and i had to do it again this year i had to like stay an extra night by myself mm -hmm. i couldn't leave the day the conference ended because it's just not how it worked um and so i mean there was a point last year where the night of the dance party i was in the hotel lobby weeping in the corner by myself mm -hmm. because of just a variety of things that like a lot of things had brought up and I remember thinking, gosh, I do not want to do this next year. Mm. Like, what is going on? And thankfully, I am, you know, self-aware enough and um, brave enough, I think, to be like, Absolutely. okay, I'm going to write it down. I'm going to think about it. And I spent a year thinking about what, what got me into the corner in the hotel that night crying. And a sweet friend that I barely know came up and asked, like, are you Okay. And I could barely get any words out. I also had a pounding headache at the time, which didn't help, which is probably my body telling me all the things. Mm -hmm. And then all she said to me that night was, and again, I barely know this woman. 
so sweet that she goes, it's okay. You don't have your people with you. You're probably not used to that. And I was like, like crying even more and then also asking for Advil. But anyway, so I wrote down like, I felt discomfort last year. Mm. And I'm not saying I didn't feel any this year, but I let it change me. I let it change the way I thought about it, the way I prepared for it. Just like I did, I let it change me. Mm. And I was super, super proud of that. So I wrote that down. Which is awesome because there's so much of life discomfort that we don't let it change us. Right, you know. And it was like, it's like, I mean, we had a whole episode, right? Discomfort on both sides. Mm -hmm. And so there were things that made me uncomfortable last year. Um, Again, it was mostly like personal internal stuff. Like it was nothing like the company did or anything, or friends or anything like that. It was just like, ish I was working through. Mm -hmm. Um, And I was like, okay, it it felt so uncomfortable that it pushed me to acknowledge the discomfort I was already in. Mm -hmm. Like it made me write down, the discomfort literally on both sides. And I was like, well, I'm going to choose to be over on this side yeah. with this kind of discomfort. So anyway, yeah. I wrote that down. I wrote down fearless isn't the goal. Brave is. Mm-hmm. I wrote down show up the only way that I can. You know, lots of talk because everybody runs their business differently and everybody has different skills. And just like as, as anything in life, whether I'm homeschooling or I'm yeah. running our businesses or doing whatever, like I can only bring to the table what I can bring to the table. And yep. that is, you you know, that's your superpower, you know, whatever. Right. But in like a non cheesy way, it's yeah. true. Like just like last week, we were God talking about gave like, us the gifts we have and give, the talents we have. Yeah. Yeah. And like to show up with those and not feel any weirdness yeah. about the stuff I don't have to mm-hmm. just like be, who I am and trying to, you know, learn and grow and all the things. Um, a story about a raft, which I'm going to tell on a different episode. Okay. <laughs> um, this one surprised me. Raft talk. Raft talk. <laughs> 101. Um, this one surprised me. Introduce yourself to people. It's not weird on either side. Because last year, I did not introduce myself to anybody. Unless they were like already in a group. Like they were like, we're right. all at a table because we all, you know, have connection somehow which that must be a thing for you because i i remember early in our marriage we would run into someone yeah and i'd be like why didn't you introduce me like it'd be like literally didn't think of it be like it would be like a friend of yours from high school and and they would yeah you would have a whole conversation and they'd walk away and i'd be like hey yeah i'm standing right here (laughs) my hand out like an idiot yeah (laughs) the whole time (laughs) waiting for that high five 28 minutes later um (laughs) No. And so I, it happened both ways. I introduced myself to a few people, people I follow on Instagram, people who worked at corporate, like I, and it wasn't weird. Yeah. Nobody thought it was weird. Then I had people come up to me. Hey, I follow you on easy, pretty yeah. clean. I had one random person who wasn't even there for beauty counter in a totally different hotel. We were eating lunch at, I was walking down the hall to the bathroom And I hear my name called. And so I assumed it was the people I was with. And I turn around and there's this woman and her husband with all their bags and suitcases. They were visiting Charlotte for the weekend for an anniversary. And she was like, I listened to your podcast. And I, and and like, it wasn't weird. Wow. And so I wrote down. I mean, the kiss you gave her was weird. Right. That was a little (laughs) weird. But you know, we were over it. We got over it. Um, (laughs) Introduce yourself to people. It's not weird on either side. Yeah. Um, Growth is always outside of your comfort zone Mm. like always Always. literally always always. and that's sort of like but also like that's my word of the year this year 100 percent. yeah and so it's like i cannot expect to grow totally staying where i am Mm -hmm. um beauty counter is really fantastic (laughs) okay nice solid (laughs) takeaway solid takeaway Um, (laughs) um and then traveling alone is rewarding 100%. 100%. Which is the word I use. And I thought, mm, that's very accurate because... Yeah. And and we talked about this. This is why we, we've decided to do the Moms on Maui thing. Yeah. Is because men have no issue finding time for themselves. For the most part, yeah. For the most part. Like, it's yeah. pretty easy for me to be like, if you were like, TJ, you have an hour to go do whatever you want. Right. I have a dozen right. things I can pick from. Yeah. And could go do them or right now. Or a week and you're yeah. going to go to Hershey Park by yeah. yourself, apparently. Uh, yeah. Call up Brad. <laughs> <laughs> um, women really struggle with that, mm-hmm. both in the inner, both in the immediate of like, I have an hour. I literally don't, I know literally don't do. know what to do. Yeah. Or like, I don't even have the foresight to decide I'm yeah. going to go do something for myself. Yeah. 
this is sort of like a is sort of forced on you to do this trip because oh, yeah, you're a part of it. Because I want to be a yeah, part of it, but it is like okay, I guess I'm going because, to this city. Like, and I could just tell leading up to it, mm. like I was just like, you need to leave. Yeah, like you need to leave your family <sighs> at home. Yeah, you need to spend time alone. Yeah sleeping on an airplane, waiting for your flights, like just yes. give your brain and your body space yeah. to think and breathe and feel yeah. so that you can engage when you come, come back, back and be, be fully present. Yeah. Yeah. And so that, that is honestly the 100% heart behind moms on Maui. Like, yes. And why it was like a, Ooh, okay, we're going to do it here. We're going to do and it And they're going to come here because we're going to make Maui's you travel great. far. <laughs> yeah. So you spend a lot of time by yourself on an airplane. Yeah. You sit on a beach by yourself with, you know, or, you well, know, you're with, with ladies, yeah. you know, like, I'll leave you alone just if you want to be left alone. Fully, like, give yourself literal physical space, brain space yeah. to breathe. Yeah. So and it that it takes a while. It takes a while to get to that point. So that you can come back mm. to your family which God has given you mm -hmm. to be fully present, to fight the good fight. Yeah. Because you being fully present in your family is the devil's nightmare. Oh, hundred percent. And you being fully engaged in that. You choosing brave, like in your family yeah. and what that looks like for you and in, in your day to day has life. ripple effects for years to come. Yeah. Even generations to come. And yeah. so that's the heart behind it. And that's why like Brooke, you going on this trip, I was just like, you have to do this. Yeah. Like, and even a few days, I was like, you just need to go. Cause there are times where you're like, I don't know, should I like travel all this way and do all this I know, this it's thing? a lot. It's a lot to travel from yeah. here. And so sometimes I'm like, is it worth it? And it is. Yeah. Because every time I go, you're like, go. Like, absolutely go. Yeah. And so, yeah. so an encouragement to you, it obviously doesn't have to be moms on Maui. Obviously, right. that, that's what we would prefer That'd be because, super fun. <laughs> it, you know, it'd be fun, fun for you to experience mm -hmm. uh, what the island has to offer. Brooke obviously is going to throw a spectacular five days together um, with lots of cool stuff. But e even if it's not that, like yeah. really let this episode be an encouragement for you to choose bravery in your life, mm -hmm. whether that's like literally just like to not minimize things or yeah. to be like, hey, I need a weekend yeah. by myself. Yeah. And I'm going to go and I'm just going to let like be still before the Lord. Yeah. And I'm going to come back ready to ready to fight the good fight. Mm. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love right. it. I love it. <laughs> well, thank you for listening. Thank you for making us a part of your week. Okay, okay I, I love, love you. Bye. bye.